Hey everyone, this is Casual Fanatic. Film reviews without the shoes. I'm Luca, your casual viewer. And I'm Cayman, your fanatic. First off, first off, let us introduce our guest to our podcast today. Yeah. This is Mr. Uli, and he is visiting the beautiful state of Colorado from Texas for the weekend. And he um, recommended this movie that we are about to listen to. And uh, he's a great friend of mine, and he's here to hanging out and uh, wanted to join us for the podcast. Pleasure being here, guys. Thanks for joining us. Alrighty, so we're doing pretty good. We were out last night with a friend of ours, and we were going around, um, looked at like an art show, like a art gallery walk uh, along like this boulevard. Yeah. Um. So we saw quite a few art. We looked at like we listened to some music. Then we went to a bar slash dance area thingy, walked around for a bit, and um, we also like played played a frisbee and did stuff like that. But yesterday was Friday, so I still had work. Um, and he walked, um, Uli, what did you do when I was at work? I went to this place called Kochi Cafe. It was all right. Not too bad. And after that, I just walked around the neighborhood here, passed by an AMC theater that reminded me of a museum. It's like very shocking. Then I encountered some people walking around, some interesting people. They had a lot of dogs here. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, we do actually have a lot of dogs. Oh, one thing I did forget was that the AMC theater that Uli just mentioned we actually went into and watched a movie. Can you believe oh, that? Oh, wow. what movie did you see? Only what movie did we see? <laughs> we saw the Batman. Nice. The Batman. <laughs> Elena and I were uh, were going to go see the Batman this week, and then we realized that the only time the theater had seats open was on her mom's birthday. So we were like, "Now, ah, well, I guess we'll go." some other time <laughs> yeah that yeah. does not work <laughs> all righty well came in how you doing bro i'm doing pretty good um it's been a pretty chill week for me it's about to start ramping up at work i got I, i've got two projects coming up that i pretty much have to work on at the same time one of them is like a super super small store which is like not going to be that hard but obviously still takes time but then the other store is going to be probably the hardest project that I've ever worked on. Oh, how so? Because usually our projects are just like surface changes. Like it's like, uh, we'll like paint these walls and like maybe hang some TVs from the ceiling and rearrange the offices or something. Like I've like taken out some walls and put in some walls in some places. Mm -hmm. But like all of that is just like interior and like they're non-structural walls. So it doesn't really matter that much. Yeah. But this new upcoming project, they're adding an expansion onto the building. And so now I've got to deal with like making sure that the expansion is still the correct distance from the property line, the roof. Like there has to be a lot of coordination with our structural consultants because, like, obviously, mm -hmm. when you're putting a new part on the building, there's a lot more. Like, you have to make sure that everything is safe because you know it could kill someone if it falls down yeah right <laughs> but like painting the existing building doesn't really do a whole lot so oh that's exciting it, does that start up on monday i'm guessing um i actually i don't have to start that project until i think like two weeks from now but there's a lot of prep work that has to like go into it before i like proper start the project so i'm gonna be working on it a little bit before then damn well, that's awesome that's really cool yeah I, i'm sure you're gonna get help from like other architects right like uh, you're, you have like a mentor that is going to be helping you through it yeah or there's they're uh, just gonna throw you in the cold end or the deep no, end no, no, they're, they're, <laughs> i have i have all resources available to me if i have questions so okay got i got you i got you you know you can talk in the mic. I forget. If you right here. <laughs> I know, but with these sounds, I can't hear you very well. He, Uli keeps turning around and talking to me, and I'm like, "Come on, Uli." Yeah, bro. Like, 
if you turn around, then I can't hear you. <laughs> right, exactly. Alrighty. Anyway, Uli, since you uh, since you suggested it, what movie are we going to be discussing today? We'll be discussing today the first movie in the Born series, Born Identity. Born Identity was released in 2002 and directed by Doug Lehman. Wait, this was the first Born movie? Oh, it was the first Born movie. Yeah. You're right. I was, I want to say, like I, I didn't others, look right? this up before, but no, I think there's like six Born movies. Uh, we get Identity, Supremacy, Ultimatum, Jason Bourne, and then the Bourne Legacy. So that's, that's five. Oh, well, I was close. Yeah. Have you guys watched any of the other ones? I have not watched one. any of them. This is my first time Ooh. watching a Bourne movie. Nice. I'm pretty sure at one point I watched a few of them, but yeah. at the same time, it's like, meh. I don't remember that well. It, it was a while back. Yeah, I, don't, I, I feel like early 2000s, um, everyone was like super, super into spy movies because there was like this mm-hmm. and then also... Uh, like around then is when the like the mission impossible series started up and i mean uh, same with this like there's there's like six five or six um mission impossible movies as well and i haven't seen a single one of them is that your window (laughs) yeah it is (laughs) <laughs> i was like is that an animal is that a window what's going no, on no it's a window <laughs> he was like Ooh. spy movies Ooh. <laughs> yeah very cool yeah I, I think i know like even for me like yesterday watching the movie the, like the vibe that i got from it was like i could be a spy easy bro <laughs> easy bro <laughs> easy dude i got this i got this you just have to know like seven different languages um you have to be able to fight off highly trained assassins and you know easy I can stuff do all that I, it's super easy bro <laughs> Dude. You, you, yo for 30 million if they teach me all that i'm in well yeah if they <laughs> teach you all that but you can't do it right now <laughs> i mean you know but i will say this have you guys ever um been like well that's like a weird thing for you to notice kind of thing i i notice things that like in I can't like give an exact description on the air, but like sometimes when people, you know, like how friends send you videos sometimes, right? And you can like watch it over and over and over again, right? Okay. I keep on watching the video until like I know every single detail and then I can usually depict where they are. It's really fucking weird. What do you mean? Like whether that be street signs, whether that be uh, like the surrounding area behind them. Like the location in the movie? No, like location where my friends are. <laughs> and then I'll tell them, I'm like, yo, are you here? And they're like, what the fuck? Yeah, how do you know? And I'm like, well, the video you sent me. And they're like, what? <laughs> oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. You're such a weirdo. I, that's what Cameron said, too. He was like, you're such a fucking weirdo. Like, why do you pay attention to that stuff? I'm like, I don't know. It's just, it's like, I, I do. A, that's a weird. deep passion to want to know where you are, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what, that's what he calls me I want to know where one of my friends are. I just say, hey, where are you at? <laughs> I do that. Or I check, like, uh, the location thingy. Way, man. I have, like, a lot of friends. Well, I mean, we share our locations with my best friends, at least. I can always see where they are, but I only check that when I need them. <laughs> or if I'm looking if they're busy. But anyway, so what do y'all think of the movie? Um, Uli, what do you think about the movie, bro? Let's we'll start with you. I mean, I've seen it several times, um, and I like it. Kind of different from like from any of the other action movies that I've seen. Um, I didn't watch it obviously when it first came out, but when I did, from like the other action movies that I've seen, it's very different in the, how they're shooting it. Um, just like the the way the camera moves, what they're telling you with those camera movements, um, with each hit. There's a reaction. So it's very interesting to see that. And also in terms of the narrative to tell that story of exactly what's going on with the character, what's the situation he's in yeah, and what he's doing to resolve that or to get out of it. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, I totally agree with that. I, I think I had seen it before yesterday. I'm pretty sure. Um, I, I remembered parts here and there of the movie. Um, but overall, like I thought it, I thought it was very, very action packed. And I like the thing is, like, I have nothing to compare it to. So for me, as of right now, this is like 
a blank slate, especially for our podcast, because this is, I think this is like the first action movie of this kind that we are reviewing. And so like, I have nothing to like go back to, but overall, I think the picture was nice. Uh, there were flaws with it that I, I, I noticed, but at the same time, like I, I was sitting there in this movie theater and I was enjoying it. And I, I, you know, I was, I was getting into like the spy tactics, even though some of the spy, spy tactics are like, uh, excuse me, what? (laughs) Um, (laughs) Yeah, I I feel, I feel pretty similar. I thought it was, it was a good movie is it's very of its time. And I think it's like, it's interesting, obviously being two decades after this movie came out and then you have like top government agencies and they have like those giant block computers <laughs> seeing all the old technology and everyone's got a flip phone and right yeah. but yeah uh, um there were like like lucas said there were a couple things throughout the movie that like i wasn't that into but overall the the story was good the the action was pretty good and i thought matt damon did a great job yeah it was insane in terms of comparing it to like other action movies and spy movies um something like uh, james bond you see typically with with those types of spy movies yeah they always have these gadgets and and everything and it always does something for (laughs) whatever the case may be and in in this case the gadgets uh really you can argue that there aren't really any other than your typical like phones and um materials yeah, to change your appearance and, and stuff like that and there was like one time in the movie where he had like a tracking device that he put yeah. on a vehicle but mm-hmm. other than that it like having the whole like spy on the run thing really sets it apart because he doesn't he doesn't have access to everything that the government has access to which in other spy yeah. movies would normally be the case right right yeah and i think with that tracker he gets it from um one of the assassins that's from the government yeah so it's like just making use of the resources that he has access to at the time i was gonna say if you want to comment on this but like uh in terms of the action sequences i don't know if any other action movies that you've seen look at from that batman movie yesterday mm-hmm. those action scenes comparing it to the to this born movie um noticing how they're really focusing in on whenever they're fighting they're, you're like right there next to them fighting and you could see with every punch that they're throwing you can see where it's landing the reaction um that kind of narrative happening uh, with the fight sequences and like that kind of stuff is is what sets it apart i think from other action movies and i think since it came out that there have been other action movies that have been trying to imitate this type of uh fighting choreography and um cinematography there you go and um they haven't done it well because they just they just think that it's um throwing punches and you're moving the camera all fast and all over the place but that's not exactly what's happening with the fighting fight sequences here um because although at, at the surface layer that's what it may seem like but as you notice as you're watching it you can see that you do have that quick movement but it's following the blow that one of the characters is throwing and then it shows you the reaction time so i thought that was pretty neat i uh without getting without getting too spoilery but um i had a a very different reaction i definitely can see what you're talking about but for me it it didn't feel much deeper than that i feel like the the fight scenes uh all of the like close up shots and the quick cuts between like you have a split second shot of someone throwing a punch and then you cut to another shot of someone getting punched and i just like for me that breaking up the fight like that detracts from it rather than adding where like as it it, it almost feels like cheating to me where cuz like if you had like a wide shot and you have like this beautiful choreography where pe- two people are fighting and they're like punching each other and flying back and like rolling on the ground and all that stuff like there's more of a performance aspect to it whereas with these quick cuts and close-ups it's almost like you could like just 
film someone throwing a punch and then cut and everyone goes and takes a coffee break and then you come back and then you're like all right now i need you to pretend you just got punched and then film that guy and you just like split it all together and it doesn't really feel as coherent you know yeah i can see that and and i think that's like i said like uh with like those other uh movies that try to imitate it because because of what happened with this movie and like yeah many of the people are like they liked it and stuff like that uh, but that's what ended up happening and that's how you get that and like you said that it, it does seem like it's like choppy you know it's like you just want to see the fight play out instead of it getting chopped off and you're moving from one cut to another cut to another cut you know because it throws you off it's not continuous but i, I do see why why that that sort of fight choreography became popular because like you said it does feel it's more gritty and like for a lot of audience members i can definitely understand how it makes you feel a little like closer to the action like you're like really in there kind of a thing yeah and so i i understand sort of why that became popular but it's yeah just... i feel like sorry to interrupt i, I feel That's like okay. for that type of like action sequence it almost because you said it was gritty and like those those open parts in the middle they kind of allow the viewers to almost like fill in the blanks themselves without like really thinking about it do you know what i mean like something happens and all of a sudden he's like somewhere else but like in the vicinity so in your mind you're like oh he like snuck over this way right so i'm just with that illustration i'm just saying like because it's so gritty every now and then like there are like small gaps in the story that they almost basically ask the viewers to fill in themselves which i think is pretty cool um but i also agree with everything you guys were saying regarding the shooting regarding the, the acting the uh cinematography and all that jazz so but if you guys had there to, if you guys had to rate this movie what would your rating be for as many times as I've watched it, I'd probably give it a solid eight out of ten. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I personally think that I would probably go a bit lower. Um probably I'll, I'd go with like a seven point four. I feel like that's a fair rating for me. Yeah, I was gonna say like a seven point five for me as well. Mm -hmm. We're all like relatively in the same range area kind of esque. Yeah. It's 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 a pretty good movie. Definitely like if you're like me and have never watched a board movie before i it it's worth watching i would suggest it yeah i agree and especially if like there's there's obviously more afterwards yeah. so there's a storyline that develops well, maybe um, uh next time uli is in town we can watch the next one yeah or even if he's out of town you know that's true uli next time you next time you want to record just you know let us know let us For know sure. bro shout out shout out uh just to give the audience a little more info here and as well as both of you uh the budget for the born identity was estimated to be around 60 million dollars oh, that's not bad yeah and the movie ended up making about 214 million nice that's a that's a pretty good profit right there if you ask me yeah we should probably go into um the game is it well, fresh or is it rotten guess the percentage of positive reviews of all the reviews of this movie it has gotten you're so close right up into the end Five. there <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs> but we're actually not going to play that game today <gasps> we're going to try out a different game it's okay. going to be a little more challenging i think oh so gosh, be prepared. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. and audience let us know uh what you think of this new game and how you think compares i think for me personally the reason I, that i wanted to try out a new game this week was because obviously no matter no matter how many times we explain it rotten tomatoes is kind of confusing with their rating system and especially okay. when like it comes like right after like we give our rating and then looking at the tomato meter but because the tomato meter rating is like a completely different system than our own rating system then it seems a little weird when like our number doesn't match up or does match up and it's like it's a whole mess and also like i i think with having two people uh well three people including me but having two people playing the game 
if if you're just guessing a number then it sort of becomes i guess easier for the second person because like whoever guesses first has to like outright guess a number and then the second person all they have to do is like go over or under to be closer to the actual number yeah i got you i got you okay but this week we are going to be playing a game i like to call the letterboxed boxing ring interesting and so what i have here is on the website letterboxed there is a description of this movie and you two are going to try and guess what it says oh god <laughs> and so this time i'll give you a uh, a sort of i'll give you an example from a different movie so let's see what's a movie what's a movie we've already done tick tick boom sure or that whistling could you put a towel there or does that just not do anything the sound is happening outside the window so i'd have to like go outside and do that oh god all right so the the description for tick tick boom says on the cusp of his 30th birthday a promising young theater composer navigates love friendship and the pressure to create something great before time runs out okay and i will i will let both of you know now the description for the born identity is a little bit longer than that but yeah. that's that's sort of the kind of thing we're we're going for all right so mr uli do you want to go first do you do you want me to give it a shot uh let's, let's see how i do all right let's go a strange man wakes up to find out he has amnesia only to <clears throat> clear his throat clear his throat <laughs> and find out that he may be working for the government and is trying to figure out what his current objective was and who he is okay okay all right here 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 goes my uh my try a man was shot twice in the back waking up without any memory of knowing what had happened come to find out jason Bourne is a spy and he's on a mission to figure out what his life's worth was and where and why these people are trying to kill him while on the way meeting a lover <laughs> <laughs> i think this i'm pretty a, close this is a tough one okay so so here's here's what i'm working with so uli said amnesia which is which is good that is but, good but luca mentioned jason Bourne as his name which is also in here hmm. oh so, let's go one point to gryffindor both of you <laughs> talked about people trying to kill him but luca said spy and i don't think uli did so, <laughs> loser. I say he's an so, I, so I think I think I might have to give this one to Luca. <laughs> Let's go. So here's here's what we got. It says, <laughs> wounded to the brink of death and suffering from amnesia, Jason Bourne is rescued at sea by a fisherman. With nothing to go on but a Swiss bank account number, he starts to reconstruct his life, but finds that many people he encounters want him dead. However, Bourne realizes that he has the combat and mental skills of a world class spy. But who does he work for? I didn't even mention his lover. What the fuck? Yeah, that was that was another thing that I like. If it had been, if, if you hadn't said spy, that might have tipped me over to Uli because you mentioned something that mm. was completely unrelated <laughs> to what it says here. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I had to be different than Uli. I, I I knew he used amnesia, and I knew that was like a good word to use. Yeah, it was. Um, but I couldn't like take it, so I had to do something completely different. You know. But yeah, but he also he just said a man, and you specifically said Jason Bourne. True. So Luke will get nice. the point for that. That was one. good. That was fun. That was fun. I like that. Yeah. All right, uh, Cayman. Uh, even though you had already read the description, I want you to um, do this yourself. <laughs> make um, your, what, what would your summary be? Your your trailer summary. All right. If I had to make my own summary, I would say. After being found by a fisherman close to death, Jason Bourne wakes up with amnesia and tries to figure out what happened to him and who he is. Cue okay. and dramatic music. That's good. Dude, I feel like oh. I'd not talk so much about the spy stuff, like keep it a bit more mysterious, you know? Yeah, that's a good way to do it. 
Like, why did he wake up in a fishing boat, you know? Yeah. But I think I should get extra points also because I mentioned that he was shot twice. That makes it, like, so much more dramatic in the back. <laughs> Does you know? it, though? Yeah, dude. Imagine being shot twice in the back and then waking up without any, um, like, memories of who you are. <gasps> All right. Well. well, let's take a quick break and then we will come back for our spoiler review. Let's do it. We're back. Welcome and prepare yourself. Hey guys, this is Cayman from the editing room here. In case y'all didn't know, Luca adds the sound effects to the spoiler intro while we're recording. But since Uli was recording in the same room as him, I have the audio of him doing it without those sound effects. So I decided to play a little prank on him. Hello all. This is the spoiler section. If you don't want to be spoiled, don't. So, Uli, what part of the beginning of the movie would you like to start talking about? Or would you like me to bring up a, uh, a great discussion point of what I thought we should kind of go off of? You could probably discuss as to where he makes it back ashore and fights off those guards, meets his love interest, Marie, and is at that hotel figuring out what's going on. That's a lot. To break that down almost, I, I, I kind of, I, I know that this movie has this kind of like a feeling around it that he's a spy, so he's doing things that normal people couldn't do and wouldn't understand, and I get that. Um, but like being shot twice in the back and then having seen those bullet holes, right, when those fishermen picked him up, I just, I just call bullshit on that. I feel like if anyone gets shot in the back right where he was shot, and if you watch the movie, look at the placements of those bullets. They're like square center. Those, those bullets for sure would have hit organs. He has plot armor, so well, I think he barely well, so. missed. Because <laughs> um, it looked like when the, when the doctor was digging them out that they were pretty surface level, so I'm thinking maybe his wetsuit was like maybe had some armor in it or something um, maybe <laughs> but i guess see this is the thing like this is like spy armor you know like it's like stuff we wouldn't understand yeah it's not like it, this ain't no cheap man's diving suit it's exactly. got like kevlar in there or something well it, it better because those bullets <laughs> were not deep at all this man he just yeah. has strong back muscles you know yeah he just got a really thick skin <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I feel like a lot of this that I have like written down is like explained to be like, well, he's a spy, so he has like, you know, spidey senses almost. Well, spidey senses. <laughs> like, yeah. So like, I feel like the word spy is in there, right? But like, I feel like there's a strong differentiation between spy and assassin. But who knows? Maybe they're just the same thing, two different names, you know? But like, to me, an assassin is uh, is it like a bit more hardcore. Right, and there's more to it. Yeah, generally, most spies, although they are trained to fight, are not meant to fight. Assassins yeah. are obviously trained specifically to kill people, but spies collect information. That's their entire purpose: is to yeah. spy on people. True. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like he does both, though, because he is, um, as they said in the movie, the guy that stays invisible. He doesn't exist, right? Yeah. And spies just don't exist. Assassins? I feel like assassins sometimes do exist because they, they just fucking kill and they go move good on. assassins. Yeah, yeah let's say if they're yeah. good, what they do is they, they gather that information, right? As you, you would have like in terms of the spy stuff, they gather mm -hmm. that intel and then use that intel for their work to see, okay, how do they stage the assassination and perform it? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And like all of the stuff that they're doing as far as like changing your hair color, getting a different outfit, making sure that you don't use the same car more than once. Like that's yeah. like normal spy stuff. You have to like constantly be changing who you are, which is why obviously he has like 
eight different passports and stuff like that. Right. But um, going back to what Lucas said in terms of <laughs> getting shot and <laughs> still having those skills and all, bullets were on surface level. He lost his memories, but he still remembers all yeah, these I, fighting tactics. I guess and, amnesia can happen for any reason, but it seemed yeah. kind of weird to me that like two bullets in the back would make him lose mm. his memory. Well, um, from that, I would say it's because <laughs> you have all these nerves, especially around like the spinal cord and everything, and the attachment from that to your brain. I feel like that's how I saw it. But who knows? Luca, do you want to add something? Yeah, the way I saw it was that he was shot in the back and these were open wounds and he got literally just dumped into the ocean, basically. Yeah, um, like there an could have been like thing. <laughs> yeah, like infection, some bacteria went up to his brain and just like fucked him up for a bit. Um, I, which I mean, that's I a was real reading, thing. It was more like it was like a uh, like trauma induced amnesia. No shot, right? Like, like because a, of like because you could see in the flashback later when he's like he goes to kill the person and then he sees all of his kids and all of a sudden he's like oh and he's like looking around like great like I feel like that moment was just so much for him that when know. he passed out from getting shot his like his brain wanted to cut out that traumatic experience and so it just like there's stopped. no way there's no way this guy's a fucking cold blooded killer he's obviously not cold million. enough to kill someone in front of three kids. Yeah, yeah, true. He's a little bitch. I seriously can't wait for you guys to watch the rest of the movies. I, I would have done it. I would have I pulled the trigger right then and there and then killed all the kids too. Damn. Was him. <laughs> That's my YouTube coffee, dude. Look, look, look. I'm, I'm putting myself in Jason Bourne's shoes, right? You go all, through all this effort of, you know, getting yourself in the organization, setting it up, um, picking the boat, picking the area you're going to go. And then you're literally standing above him with a gun out and you don't do it because there's a kid there that just seems weird to me i don't know like i don't think he even has kids he has no family so it's like well, why would he even feel that way <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah people aren't aren't allowed to have empathy unless they uh specifically exactly. know that situation <laughs> right i feel like as a spy your empathy is just kill the kid too gosh <laughs> sounds about right you know, I, obviously I would never do this, but if I was a cold-blooded cast assassin and if I didn't complete well, my job, I would be like killed. Well, that's, you know? that's the that. whole point is that Jason Bourne is not a cold-blooded assassin. He obviously has feelings. He's a good person. Yeah, true. Alrighty. Um, I have another point that I kind of wanted to move on to from there was... <clears throat> when he finally like got off the boat was healed up or whatever yeah he got onto the train right how do you know to get on a train and when to get off this train how, how do you know you don't remember anything and he just like got off this one station like started walking around and he's all like this number fucking tattoo on his fucking hip he was like yeah let me go to this fucking bank i'm like how do you know well it had it had a like on that little laser thing it had the name of the bank so all he has to do is like look up the address yeah, like find a phone book or something. I don't know. Yeah. S speaking of his skills, there is there's one thing that I uh, <laughs> that he did. I listed it in both my my positive and my negative uh, category. Is when when he got off the boat and he was walking, and there's that shot where he's like he's walking down the street, and then the car drives in front of him and he disappears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I put Classic. it. I, I put it in my positive category because that wasn't a special effect like they did that for real and it's in my negative category because watching them do it for real made me realize how absolutely ridiculous of a move that is and like it's really only effective if someone's chasing you because you can even see in the shot like he's walking and walking and then the second the car passes in front of him he like ducks down behind it and grabs onto the side of the car so that he just like goes off the screen with the car yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i'm like for all the people on the other side of the street like could you imagine just seeing someone duck down and grab onto a car as it drives by and how ridiculous that would look true <laughs> you always have to think about it from the other side <laughs> um I wrote something down about you guys remember the scene where he fought the cops. Yeah. Um, and they were like, he was sleeping on this bench for the viewers and two cops approached him and they were like, sorry, you can't sleep here. And they were talking in German. You can't see the schlafen. 
Um, and then he like woke up and I think he all of a sudden started talk, talking German again. And then they, I guess, I don't know exactly what happened or how it led to it, but he like basically knocked the shit out of him and like was pointing their guns at him. But then this is the part that I don't get. He was pointing the gun at him, right? And then he threw the gun down and ran away. Yeah. Sir, your fingerprints are on the gun, no? Well, he was freaking out and he like obviously did not expect or like that was just like knee jerk reaction him beating up these two police officers and not what he was trying to do, you know? Yeah, yeah but isn't like a, a smart thing usually to do if you fuck with the cops to not leave your DNA behind or your fingerprints or evidence? Well, yeah, but if you're panicking you don't think about things like that that's why criminals get caught is because they don't think about those things criminals need to calm down and think about it a little bit more well on that uh i was gonna say he's an assassin for like the dark like the, i guess the dark side of the government you know and so dark like side maybe his fingerprints aren't in their typical database that we would have our fingerprints in maybe they're erased but they do have his intel and information and stuff like that so obviously they know who he is they know where mm -hmm. he's at you know and right. it, it was established in the movie they knew what he was doing he was passing that information on to them but it was because well, in, of that in every other scene he like wipes everything down for fingerprints so. yeah i think right. at, at that point it's like how we discussed earlier like that that instinct that muscle memory um, and then like processing afterwards he didn't realize it's just instinct there's someone here that have weapons. You don't know what's going on. You're just waking up, you know? I mean, that's, that's probably how they figured out because you remember the, the whatever CIA or whatever he works for was like, yeah. oh yeah, last night he beat up two cops. Is like, yeah. how else would they know that? They probably did check the gun for fingerprints and they were like, oh, that was, that was born. Exactly. Like, this fucking idiot should have taken the gun. That's all I'm saying. Like, instinct? We're talking about instinct the whole time. Like, you got on the train, instinct, he, uh, he fought these guys off instinct, but then he's like, well, no more instinct when you on the train has throw the gun away. Instinct. That's just looking yeah. up directions. Dumb luck. <laughs> yeah. That's just dumbass <laughs> luck. No, it's just like, they have the internet. You just be like, oh, I need to get to this bank. How do I get there? Take the train. Where did he have internet, though? We didn't we have to pop into a fucking internet. libraries yeah, have public internet. Who goes to libraries anymore, bro? Bruh. Bruh. This... First of all, this is in 2002. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck. True. I went to libraries back then. Um, no, nah, I'm just saying, like, instinct should have been to take the gun with you. If we're talking about instinct, right? Like, that's just, like, 101. Especially if you find out, like, you just, like, fucked up two, two cops, so you need to protect yourself. No, but people are after but you. But that's not instinct, though. Like, they're, like it's taking a gun with you is a conscious decision. We're talking about muscle memory, which is something that you don't like you you're not making a decision your body just acts on its own like he right, said he's like you we were talking about with the rope you like oh i just saw the rope and did it like he didn't make a choice to to do to make the knots he's but a like, killer though right the gun is like his tool it's his, his his life and he should have taken that shit with him i don't know i think you're i think you're he's, misunderstanding he, what we're talking about yeah <laughs> <laughs> he's he's looking like uh deep into exactly like how you said it right now it's like he's a killer he should know that I gotta take this gun, you know? This is what I use. It's his instinct. If, well, okay, look, for guitar people, when they see guitar, it's like instinct for them to pick it up and play it. It's just, it's like, they don't think like, oh, there's a guitar, and like, maybe I should go over there and pick No, they see the guitar and they pick it up and they start playing it. Because it's like, usually play engraved. something really annoying and then no one wants to hang out with them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> or that, yeah. I mean, same thing though, right? <laughs> It's instinct for them to like pick it up and be annoying at that point, right? So it always happens. Always. If there's a cat, it's like usually an instinct for me to just go and pet it. I don't like think about it. Like, do I want to go pet this fucking cat right now? Like, is it, is it, do I want to? Natural like, I don't know. Well, in terms of instinct and muscle memory, instinct is uh, like how you're saying, like uh, with a guitar player and then like instinct to, okay, you're going to die, you're going to survive, you know, like that kind of stuff. But right. mainly what Kevin and I were discussing with this is like muscle memory is that like you go down and tie your shoes, you know, like at this point in time, you know, the type of knot that you're going to do because you've done it for, for so long, you know, yeah. that's with any shoes with the, the strings and stuff. I think um, I think if, if we had said instinct before, that was probably the wrong word to use, because like like you said, like 
picking up a guitar at a party sure that you can call that instinct but like you're not doing that by muscle memory playing the guitar might be muscle memory because you just like you know how to play those songs and your fingers know what to do without thinking about true, it. that's true, muscle yeah, memory yeah. but yeah. picking up the guitar is like it's a separate thing yeah yeah for sure for sure i get that um one thing about the movie i thought like the quote-unquote intense scenes were great I, I thought they were filmed very well i think the lighting of the cinematography was really good um there was like not a lot of like uh like shake going on there wasn't too much i feel like for the scenes where they were on the motorcycle or like the car was getting chased yeah. um like the movement through the, the city and the movement through the cars was just really well done um yeah, the and, car chase was great yeah yeah i need myself a mini cooper after that <laughs> <laughs> true just so you can do those moves we did get um, a uh, a little bit of a zoom and enhance cliche in one of those scenes after before before born gets in the car with marie um and the cia is like looking at the the footage of the alley and it's like this blurry image of like two people in the car and he has to like enhance that and, like zooms in and you can like see the license plate and i'm like oh. yeah that was yeah. back before that was in every single show and movie ever and like oh, yeah was just that's just not how technology works <laughs> yeah, the technology right. to, to enhance at that quality why not just have the camera at that quality in fact i mean enhancing is a real thing but not yeah but it's like that. it's just guessing like you're just like yeah. i have four blocks here and i'm gonna split each of these blocks into four more blocks so then the computer has to like guess what those four blocks look like yeah i'd like to see like what a modern spy movie looks like you know like one in 2022 because obviously this is an old one but i mean it wasn't the bad. newest born movie came out what like three years ago not that old mm. i have no idea 2016 no way yeah Are you serious the the latest one well still <laughs> it feels yeah. more recent than that that's a while back that's a long a lot has happened in six years bro yeah yeah like three different presidents so back to the uh back to the the fight in in Paris another thing that I that I oh noticed God. was a little ridiculous was I don't know if you guys noticed the the sound effects were like yes. literally like cartoon punch noises <laughs> it was, it was oh God, so ridiculous yeah. Dude, every single it was like <laughs> yeah it's like whack I think, like that's how it was like Back in like those two thousands, whenever like making movies and like that's like the typical sound effects that you would get when like throwing punches, yeah. you're like, <laughs> <laughs> and, like punching like bags of rice or something, and like I mean Basically, now yeah, like you can like further enhance that sound quality as to like what you're gonna get out of a punch and stuff like that. But like <laughs> back I think people just like they wanted it to sound more yeah. action because like yeah. obviously like it like if you throw a real punch like it's just gonna sound like like skin hitting skin <laughs> but, or like, like a thud or a thud yeah i mean it depends on like where you hit them you're like let me punch you real quick really hard and we'll record <laughs> okay, it okay. <laughs> but like the whole like, <laughs> like yeah, <laughs> punches yeah. don't make that noise <laughs> no <laughs> punching air i don't know what's going on but i literally wrote here the punching noises though lmao <laughs> Um, and that was the fight scene where that guy like jumps out of the window and kills himself, right? Yeah, that was wild. I like, I guess he, he doesn't know that Jason Bourne is like, doesn't know what the fuck is going on. And so right. for him, it was probably like, well, I either have to kill myself or he's going to like take me prisoner and torture me or something like that. But like Bourne's over here, like, bro, I just want to know, like, why the <laughs> fuck are you trying to kill me? Like what's going on? <laughs> yeah. It's just extremely weird. I don't know. Like, why even kill yourself at that point, right? Like, just fight to your death. I mean, right? I suppose. I, I don't know, Bish. I don't know. Look, if I'm a killer spy again, right? <laughs> and I am set out to kill someone and he's beating my ass. I'm not just going to go and run out a window and kill myself. I'm going to fight this guy till he kills me. It doesn't make any well, sense. But, but if, if someone was planning on capturing and torturing you, 
they wouldn't kill you. Like you can try and fight uh, them as as much as you want. Yeah. They would just restrain you, and then That's and then fair. you're stuck being tortured. That's fair, but like the guy was still good enough to run and jump out a window. Like, you know, I thought I thought he jumped out the window and like landed it, and you know, like how spies do, like jump roll kind of shit. No, he just no, right like, over that railing. <laughs> yeah, he he jumped right over the railing and then literally just went splat on the ground. I think but, the main thing here is how that framed window just broke so easily. You know what I'm saying? I mean. An old French window, bro. He just went straight through it. I'm surprised he didn't just have like a cyanide capsule or something like there. Exactly. Has your yeah. ways to kill like, yourself. Exactly. Like spies usually would have that, or just fucking like I don't know. There are better ways to die than like falling off. And plus, that's not a certain death, right? Like yeah, jumping unless you like you specifically like, like when you jump specifically aim so that your head hits first. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sure, but. When you're in the air, you're like free fall. You have no control, right? Yeah. So like there is high chance of him just like breaking both his legs, a shit ton of bones, and then Bourne coming down and like just like stepping on him. <laughs> He's like, like, tell me everything. Okay, you know. so like now that you, <laughs> you broke made it easier your for legs. Me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now that you broke your legs, now let, let's feel real pain. <laughs> I don't know. But also at the same time when they went down the stairs and we saw like that super nice old lady killed. I was so sad. Yeah, that was wild. That was so fucked up. I was not a fan. I was upset. She was so nice. Yeah, killing old <laughs> ladies, not cool. Killing children, totally fine. Yeah, <laughs> if, if, if there's no reason for him to kill her downstairs. Like, she wasn't doing no harm. <laughs> she was a witness. <laughs> it might be a good spy. You're too tall to be a spy. You can't hide anywhere. No, no, exactly. See, I'd be poking out so much that no one would expect me to be a spy. <laughs> it's a <the> perfect cover. <laughs> You'd be like, oh, let me put on, side. let me put on this wig so I look different. And they're like, no, we can still see you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, it'd be, I'd be like the dumbest thing to suspect to be a spy, right? Because I'm, I'm, I am so tall and just big, but you know, that's maybe sometimes the ones that are out. And just the 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 open are the the ones you least expect. Yeah, until until you do something, and then you you literally can't disguise yourself after that because they know what you look like. Fair, fair. Alrighty, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump real quick to kind of like the endish of the movie, where they were like, "Oh, we gotta wipe our office now," and he was like, "How long do you think it'll take to wipe an office?" And she was like, "Oh, like two to three hours," and I was like, "Bitch." Wipe a whole office in two to three hours it was with a small two people. Office. Say what? Yes, it was a small office. Okay, but like to completely wipe it as if no one lived there. And they showed the shot from the inside, and he was like shredding paper one by one. And I'm like, there's no way he's gonna yeah, finish he was, in two fucking hours. Yeah, he was he was shredding too slow. But I yeah. think like <laughs> by wipe the office, I don't think they meant like it has to be completely clean. There just has to be like no evidence there. Yeah, mm. you know what I mean. Well, like if they, those if, papers that slow wasn't going to work out. No, yeah. But like if you were like, all right, let's completely delete everything on this computer and shred all this paper. Like I could see doing all that in three hours. You just like, you wouldn't have time okay. to like pack up the computer and all that. Yeah, but. I mean, that's what I was saying. I was like, wipe the office as in like, take all your equipment out, uh, like remove whatever you have in there. I don't know. It was just a, a hard reach for me. Um, I felt a little weird earlier in the movie going back uh, again is mm-hmm. um i don't know his his relationship with marie was was Cringe. a little weird for me yeah i yeah. feel like first like obviously he like gets her into all this trouble and then when they get to paris he is like okay listen this is gonna be dangerous so like you should leave just like go to the police and you'll be safe and she's like no i don't want to go to the police i want to stay with you and like yeah. buckles her seatbelt and stuff <laughs> and then later on in the movie she finds out that he's like killed people and then she's like no stay away from me and i'm like right. so you, you didn't think that he had killed people before after you watched him beat a bunch of people up like what i Man, and like he's paying you ten thousand dollars to drive. He literally like two almost hours. killed someone in that apartment earlier. Like, right? And and then like now all of a sudden she wants to run away and he has to like convince her. And then later at the freaking at her brother's 
house or whatever then again he is like all right this is your chance you guys need to leave and it'll be safe and she's like but wait and i'm like girl you need to make <laughs> up your mind like either leave or don't leave <laughs> yeah yeah totally agree 100 percent and this the sex scene was a little weird. obviously it wasn't like that intense of a sex scene they just like made out and then it cut to the next morning but i don't know that felt a little strange to me i get like on the one hand it's like emotions mix sometimes so i get if you're like if you're in a high stress situation sometimes all of that stress can turn into a lot of horniness oh. <laughs> are you talking from but, experience or what's going on here i've never had that well you obviously haven't been in a stressful enough situation <laughs> nope. i'm super stressed let's fuck <laughs> like what <laughs> but that's what i'm saying is like on the other hand it's like obviously you guys are literally running for your life and like literally just had to die and cut your hair I'm like, is this really the time to be doing this? Mm, true. <laughs> and by the way, her haircut was really good for just being cut with some sheer scissors. Scissors. Yeah, you could definitely tell, like, in the scenes where where he was cutting the hair, you were like, mm, that's gonna be a bad haircut. And then <laughs> right. It like it cuts to the next scene, and you're like, yeah. okay, no, someone like a professional went back and finished that up because that 100%. was not the haircut that he was yeah. given her. Yeah, I wish they would have like left it as like a super jank dog shit haircut. That would have been perfect. <laughs> I mean, why? Why give her like a beautiful like like long bangs in the front and like a nice little bowl cut in the back or whatever bob cut I meant? Just leave it like a shit haircut. That's See, how that's, spies roll. No, that's why that that's one of the the skills they don't talk about as much. But actually, part <laughs> part of spy school is you have to become a professional barber. <laughs> right, right. I was gonna say you got you got to get that uh that GTA barber uh skill where you can like take someone <laughs> like with a short haircut, haircut. <laughs> yeah, and you you cut the hair and then it's longer. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah. The GTA hairstyle. You know, I'm sure in that thirty million of training, that's that's one part of it. Well, let's see here. Since you cut to the back, I'm gonna cut to the endish again, where he, what was he doing again? He was up twelve floors, but then he like, oh, and he used he, he used that thick guy to jump down yeah. like God. ten stories. <laughs> yeah, he he literally jumped down the middle of a stairwell, which is maybe like six feet or yeah, maybe six feet by six feet or eight feet by eight feet, a hole, and he just like jumps off using this guy as like a shield while falling kills a guy that's coming up and then lands on top of this guy and like gets up and runs away like what physics doesn't yeah, apply here man <laughs> i know as long as you have a as long as you have a big guy underneath you he's pretty much like a cushion there's not anything hard in there like bones or cartilage like <laughs> right that's it was just i saw that i was like bro you could have done that in like so many better ways than like taking this dude jumping uh, it just makes sense also there's like almost no way that he would just fall straight down like exactly, that. exactly. like he would either he would either move a little to one side and like hit one of the stairs or like you'd both start like spinning in the air right yeah i mean it took you forward momentum to jump down right right so that forward momentum keeps carrying and you will end up hitting one of these fucking railings and dying um, speaking of I, like because when he he kicked the guy's head through the railing and then the other guy at the bottom of the stairwell started shooting up shooting and it was like yep. shooting the railing like right by the dead guy and i'm like it it was so surprising to me that he didn't like accidentally shred that guy's face open with the machine gun true Gosh. that's another thing this movie did not have a lot of blood at all no, it was it was very very tame yeah like if you're shoving someone's head through a railing, like there's bound to be blood. Like I'd like to see Uli using my face as like a a method of breaking this railing next to us. <laughs> like there's no way my head's gonna be in one piece. There was a little. Uh, <laughs> I think I think the most blood is probably like when when the the first assassin jumps out the window and then they like walk down and you can see the pool of blood under him in the street. Oh, could you? I didn't really look that closely at that guy. I was just still amazed that he just killed himself. Yeah, and I think at, at the end, there's like a little bit of blood on Bourne's forehead. And then that's about it. Oh my god, that's so much. <laughs> I think with these types of movies, it's more story-driven with like yeah. the fighting sequences and stuff like that. So it's not going to be as... I mean, it's, it's PG-13, so... Yeah. That's, that's probably why, yeah. One more pool of blood and it's rated R. Yeah, right? You can only have three liters of blood in the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> Which 
which actually is a lot of blood, but yeah. Um, Towards the end, like there in that fighting sequence you were discussing at the stairs, I mean, just right before that, that's when you get the whole spiel as to who he is, what he's been doing, um, and the Treadstone Project, you know, that's where you learn that stuff in. The ward is the, the old guy that's going to Alexander at one point in the movie and asking him about the Treadstone Project and how it's going and with that stray Jason Bourne, like what's happening, you know, thing is getting out of control. And you find out towards the end of the movie, <laughs> he ends up killing Alexander or having him killed. Yeah, and I just like, I don't, I don't know if I buy all that. Like, obviously, I know, I know that the CIA does some shady stuff, but the idea that like, oh, we're gonna get in trouble for spending so much money on this project, so I'm gonna have the leader of the project murdered. Like, right. I don't think the CIA rolls like that. <laughs> no. Yeah, that guy got <clears throat> fucked up out of nowhere. Yeah, I think. Well, <laughs> like, could you scene. imagine if every time someone like every time someone spent a little too but much money or like failed a mission they were like oh we'll kill you and find someone else like bro <laughs> no one would work for the cia <laughs> right easy replacements it's so shady stuff man those black ops you know that type of ordeal dumb um let me see here do i have any more notes i would like to talk about at the end, it's, I, I, I put, why'd they shut everything down? Well, yeah, exactly. It's just like at the end, you're left wondering, because they shut everything down, that's like, what what's going to happen with Bourne? He's good. He's free. Um, like, what else is going on? What are the intentions? You know, because right. what, yeah, what about all those other people that were part of that project? Because Bourne wasn't the only one, as you saw with true. that fight in the field with Mm -hmm. um that other assassin which they call the professor yeah, and yeah speaking, in their head? speaking of the professor um did you uh, <laughs> this is something <laughs> that, like it's not super important but it did kind of catch my eye is like for some reason like normally with with the suppressor you would like attach it on the end of the barrel but with he like the shoved it all the way through yeah, the barrel. It, like his his suppressor he just like would slide it on and off of his barrel and i'm like that's not how suppressors work <laughs> look it is a spy suppressor came and you're asking again too much it was Bruh. a homemade suppressor man you know like even though he made it it's better than all the other ones that are yeah yeah whenever he <laughs> the... would like whenever he would slide it on it would actually slide the barrel of the gun back into the, nope. the frame nope, nope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, the first mechanics here exactly it's not like yeah, you, you don't they, screw it on you you push the barrel back into the housing i think they just don't know how suppressors work <laughs> which is kind of weird for what 60 million dollars maybe they and just thought it looked cool an expensive and no one knows even. enough about sniper rifles <laughs> there's no way imagine if you just did the wrong motion for the suppressor was like fuck that was our last shot we have to move forward <laughs> yeah they gotta roll with it <laughs> yeah this is also like I mean, this happens with literally every movie ever, so it's not even like unique to this film. But also, yeah. suppressors suppressors are not silencers. Like real silencers don't don't exist. That's why, like in actual firearm terminology, like nobody calls it a silencer because it it's not gonna be silent. It's mm -hmm. a suppressor. Yeah. Everyone like within a block or two is still gonna be able to hear that. It's just like instead of being like bang, it's like. Bang. Bang. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so true. Very true. There were like uh, very flawed mechanics in this movie. Um, but I mean, but overall, yeah, that I happens like in it, like in John Wick, even. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's typical like, movie magic. <laughs> pew, pew. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. But I mean, overall, I feel like it still made sense. There was nothing that was like a sore thumb that stood out to me. For yeah. sure. There's, that would like ruin the movie, you know? Yeah. That's why I gave it a 7.4. And like, I have one one more note here that I uh <laughs> it's not gonna be that important to either of you, I think, but I was very surprised to see my man Walton Goggins as just like a random background tech in this movie. He's 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 been in a oh, lot more yeah, stuff recently, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I like I was watching this and I was like, wait a second. Is is that him? And I looked up. I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> like, Dude, it was I guess, short hair, man. So I guess he wasn't. I guess he wasn't as famous back then because he like he literally doesn't even have a name in this movie. He's just research tech. 
Damn. Get rolled, kid. But came in. We were just talking about. I brought up ratings again. What is the tomato score for this one? All right. So we did not play our game, but I can still let you guys know. Give me just a second here. Yeah. I was like, I rated a 7.4. I want to know <laughs> how close I was. You said 7.5. And then Uli said. Well, but eight. yeah, but, let the, but that, uh, again, that's why another reason why I didn't, uh, I changed up the game is because like, our our rating is of course not going to match because our rating is based on what we think about the quality of the film but the rotten mm. tomato meter is not about quality it's just about how many people liked it versus how many people didn't true yeah that's why like sometimes i have to like skew my score because i was like well it's not about quality it's about people's and how they felt just watching it uh but the the tomato meter for the born identity is 84% Damn. That's so yeah, a little higher um, than I thought it would be, but it's okay. That's uh, eh, eighty four feels right. Mm, I mean, maybe. Do you guys have any last notes on this movie for us? I do not have any more. I'm notes. all out. Done here. I think uh, I I will say one last thing is this movie obviously like this happens with a lot of initial movies in a series where like I feel like the way this movie ends it could have stopped there and you're just like yeah like Jason Bourne lives happily ever after in mm-hmm. fucking Greece or wherever he is and the CIA moves on with their next mission and it's just like ta-da all done but obviously it became so successful with its freaking over 200 million dollars yeah. and they were like yeah we're gonna make more and so right uh, I'd be interested to see um whenever if we ever do get around to talking about the next one how they force him back into the game <laughs> true yeah because i don't even remember i yeah. don't even know if i, saw I think originally one. these came out as books oh, uh, did they? The, yeah. the the first one is there there is a book called the born identity but this movie is like very loosely based on it yeah but like all of the specifics are different and all of the other born movies after this one are original screenplays. They're not based on anything. Gotcha. Gotcha. Sweet. Alrighty. Well, I think it's a good point to move on to trivia. Got, uh, I got three normal trivia facts and I did in fact find one trash fact for us this week. Oh, it's sick. I love the trash facts. <laughs> um, those really excite me. I'm glad we came up with those. So our first piece of trivia here is that matt damon climbed down the last 30 feet of the building himself without a stunt double when he is escaping the embassy Hmm. he at the time he called it the most grueling thing that he had to do um without like a harness or anything like that i I I guess not it it just says it just says by himself but i'm sure they had some sort of safety measures damn that's awesome i would do it uh the name born came from a person named Ansel Bourne, who was a preacher in Rhode Island and was the first documented case of dissociative fugue. One day in 1887, he forgot who he was, started a new life in Pennsylvania under the name Brown, and opened a convenience store. About three months later, he woke up and not only remembered his life as Bourne, but forgot all of his life as Brown. No fucking very, way. And and was very confused why he was in Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah, I, I've like heard and like read about that and like even watched like something like that in which you forget everything previously. And so you're like you're living a new life. But then through either stress or whatever it may be that causes um, whatever memories or other functions of your brain to start coming back from how it was previously, that can totally happen. That's gnarly, dude. Uh, guys, if I ever forget who I am, please tell me. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, we can tell you all you want, but if you forget and you don't know, you're still going to be creeped true. out. <laughs> Look, you guys just need to start documenting my life so I can read about it. Easy. Well, I mean, well that's, that's actually crazy, though. For. True. That's crazy. What? Yeah. He just became a completely different person for three months. <laughs> Gosh, and then, like, what dude. happened after those three months? Did he go back to being born? Yeah. And close his convenience store or what? Well, he didn't even know he had a convenience store. He forgot those th- when he remembered his entire life. He forgot those three months. Okay, wait, wait. How how was this documented? I'm sure there are documents of it, and like people would recognize him and be like, "Hey, yeah. Mr. Brown," and he's like, "Who the fuck yeah. is that?" 
<laughs> that's fucking crazy. Wow. <laughs> I couldn't imagine. That's really cool. Okay. I'm glad they uh brought him up in the movie. That's that's a good tribute. The the red bag that Bourne uses in the consulate is now owned by Adam Savage of the Mythbusters. Nice. And contains all of the props that Jason pours onto the desk in Paris. Oh yeah, he's a big like prop collector because I know he also used to work on props and stuff like that for like Star Wars and like other movies. Yeah. Adam Savage used to work for hmm. ILM, which is Industrial Light and Magic, and they do a lot of special effects and prop work for big, big movies. But yeah, oh, he's wow. he's really into collecting props. He has like original outfits and like handmade replicas. He he makes a lot of stuff himself as well. But yeah, wow, not that's surprising really cool. at all that he has that that bag. I wonder how much he paid for it then. It was a gift. <laughs> no shot oh it could God. be he's oh, well known probably, in the business yeah. that's crazy that's why the rich always become richer <laughs> all right you ready for our trash fact yeah i'm ready dude i'm ready <laughs> trap myself in the birth dates on the passports are details for cover identities and don't list his actual birthday <laughs> <laughs> uh, what no way Did it, oh god that's so bad well, because I mean, why would they give you his birthday? You know, exactly. It's, like, it's not like I wanted to his... give him a cake. <laughs> they also, <laughs> they also like, didn't list his real name. So yeah, imagine uh, if you had like five different cover identities, and they all had the same birthday. <laughs> the same birthday, and like Bruh. the same name. Ridiculous. It, wow, good stuff. Whoever put that out there, dumbass. <laughs> They're like, oh my gosh, so many people are going to be surprised by this. Like they don't even know. Yeah, this is the fact that everyone needs to know. So yeah, if you are listening, let us know what you thought about the Bourne identity. Oh yeah. Would love to hear some more opinions, positive or negative. Mm -hmm. um, Tweet at us, use our emails, all that jazz. Let us know um, what you also thought about the new game. I I enjoyed it quite a lot. Came in, I, I didn't know this was going to happen, and obviously Uli didn't either, but I think we enjoyed making up our own little uh, synopsis of the film, yeah. Yeah, it's fun. That was good. That was good. So if you would like to share your opinion on the movie or the game or anything, really, you can send an email to casualfanaticpod at gmail.com or you can hit us up on Twitter at cashfanpod. That's it. Yo, Uli, I, I want to thank you again one more time. Thank you so much for requesting this film and then coming down and, you know, recording. You literally came to Denver just to record this episode. So I really thank you for coming down and uh, recording with us. Um, I hope you had a blast, and I know we did too. Thank you. Sweet, man. Pleasure being here. <laughs> really is there. Is there anything you'd you'd like to plug if people want to want to see what you're up to? You got like a Twitter or Twitch or something where, where people can find out more about you and your life? I have nothing, you know, but like promoting <laughs> you guys, that's where it's at, you know? Give these guys a follow, comment, on anything even like even the window you know or if you have any movie suggestions or anything you know that'd be great well i appreciate that plug Uli. i really do all right well this has been casual fanatic thanks for listening thanks for listening peace <laughs>